Our scripture this morning is out of um, Luke's gospel. It's a story, terrible story that many of you may have heard before, but uh, what we want to hear this morning, Luke 18, verses 15 through 17. People were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they, they sternly ordered them not to do it. But Jesus called to them and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them. For to such as this belongs the kingdom of heaven. Truly I tell you, whoever does not have to receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter. May the Lord bless us with the teaching in his word. I will start with a question. I know Pastor Mark usually talks a little while before he asks his first question, but I want to ask the question to begin with. How many of you here, and feel free if you're uncomfortable answering, that's okay. How many of you here were once little children? <laughs> Which means we can learn about children and especially about Jesus and the little children. The Sunday school teacher asked her, her kids one Sunday to draw a picture of someone from the Bible. And they all got busy. And one little girl was especially busy, you know, even using her tongue to help her draw. And the teacher came by and said, Susie, what are you drawing? Who are you drawing? She said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, but, but Susie, nobody knows what God looks like. She said, well, they will when I get done. <laughs> <laughs> Children are an important part of life, an important part of church. Someone once said to me that if statistics have shown that if your parents didn't have children, you won't be there. <laughs> All of us were children at one time or another. I didn't say childish, I said children, childlike. Okay? And we learned about what it means to love, to have faith, to, to respect others, to grow, to be honest, and all these other things that we learned as we grew up. I've been, in, been surprised over the years by uh, when, a, when there's been a, a funeral or a wedding. And families come to the church and for the rehearsal, wedding rehearsal, or for the time before the funeral. And there's little children as part of the family. And they're climbing over the pews or under the pews or running around. I have heard parents who say that the children don't, shouldn't behave like that in worship because that's not the way you act in a building, in this building. And this bothers people. My answer to them is that we were, pro we were probably like that when we were little, but at some point we learned to not, to pay attention to be aware of what was going on and to act appropriately. The answer is by being in worship, we learned about how to be in church. Uh, mothers, uh, fathers do too, but mothers more appropriately can stop a child dead in their tracks with the book. <laughs> Today's scripture is about that very subject. In the time of Jesus, parents brought uh, their children to noted scholars, to rabbis, to teachers, to important people, to have them blessed by that person. And they, we still do today, a lot. But in our scriptures, the disciples believed that children were being a disruption. and asked them to not bring the children. 
As a parent, but, having been a, but also having been a pastor in front of a congregation for worship, I know that children fidgeting, wiggling, making a little noise, fussing, bothers the parents more than it does the people around them. Or at least it shouldn't bother the people around them. If a child is being disruptive, it's, a, it's how they learn to not be disruptive by being there. Children learn by uh, instinct, by uh, <coughs> instruction, by teaching a child to be, be quiet at certain times. It's how they learn, it's how we as adults now know how to learn. I uh, found, uh, found it uh, very interesting, uh, very telling when there was a wedding, particularly a wedding, but sometimes when there was a funeral that uh, had young children in the family and um, even uh, in the rehearsal or before the service, as I said before, or even in the service itself, uh, the child was uh, running around or doing whatever and the parents would say, stop running. You don't do that in church. And the look on the child's face told me they had no idea what it meant to be in church and why you couldn't do that. We teach our children in part by our actions. However, some things are just part of a child's makeup from the time they are born. If it has been said that there are three things that are truthful in this life, a child, a drunk, and yoga pants. <laughs> <laughs> And if you don't understand it, somebody will explain it. <laughs> Unfortunately, we, we too often teach our children to not tell the truth by punishing them if they do. Children learn quickly that if they have done something wrong and they admit it, they're going to suffer the consequences. They try to blame it on a brother or a sister or some other individual rather than taking responsibility for what they did. If something goes wrong, is broken around or spilled around the house, as an only child I learned that there wasn't anybody to blame. <laughs> the dog just didn't do it. <laughs> I think the disciples wanted to keep the children away from Jesus because they, they didn't want, they didn't think children had anything to say worth hearing. I remember when I was growing up there was a phrase that was around at the time and may still be that said children should be seen but not heard. I think that we still struggle with children and hearing and what they have to say. I've been I've been in situations where there are children who are very um, precocious, who have been part of an adult conversation. Although they haven't had the experiences in life to understand what they're talking about. And so they become part of this conversation and, and it's difficult to correct a child, to correct them when the parents think it's just wonderful that this child can participate in an adult conversation. Truthfulness is probably most helpful when it is seasoned with a certain amount of wisdom. A husband soon learns how to answer the question, does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> and still survive. <laughs> a child might answer yes when there were uh, probably considerably better answers. Children are also filled with joy. Now my wife, now we have to understand that uh, joy is more than laughter or smiling or being happy kind of thing. Joy is Joy is understanding that there is a, a, 
to know that there is something greater than we are that's caring for us, that's watching for us, and is helping us do good. I believe children come with joy in their hearts, right within them. As I mentioned before, Linda and I have been foster parents over the, about nine years. <clears throat> we asked for and received infants. I know some people <clears throat> want to question our sanity. <laughs> However, we found great joy in caring for these infants. A sense of joy that overflowed into our lives. We had one child who was having an allergic reaction to a medication the doctors had given her and was covered with a rash. We knew it had to be itching something terrible. Linda gave her an opioid bath, hoping to alleviate the itching somewhat until the medication we'd been given began to work. And yet, there she was, covered with this rash that we knew was uncomfortable, sitting there with a big smile on her face. We had one child who came to us with a, with a broken arm, and she didn't seem to have a great deal of pain or struggled with the pain. She was young enough that about four months, and so that they didn't uh, wrap, put her arm in a cast, they wrapped it uh, to her body to just immobilize it. I don't think she felt much pain because we spent half the time trying to wrap her back up in it because she kept getting out of it. <laughs> the joy that she had in life just overflowed into our lives and the lives of people around us. It is knowing that there is a power greater than you and watch is one that is watching over you. I think, I think we grow into adults. As we grow into adults, we lose some of the joy that was within us. Because we are aware of all the things around us that can go wrong. We become more concerned about these things than for the joy and the one who is caring for us. So we've come to understand that children deal well with truth and with joy that just goes beyond being funny, but children also have a sense of hope. Children seem to know, they have a knowledge, if you will, that good things will come. They know that good things are coming, just like, I don't think there's any children in here, tomorrow night they know good things can come if they go knock on doors. An elderly lady called her pastor and wanted him to come visit her. She was in the hospital, and the end of her time was coming, and she wanted to talk to him about her service. And he, so he went and was sitting by the bedside and talking to her, and they were talking about different things in the service. And finally she said, but there's one thing you've got to do for me. When I'm buried, I want to be buried with the Bible and the pork. And the pastor said, if you're the Bible, I understand because you've been, it's been part of your life, all of your life. It's been a part of who you are. But I don't understand the point. She said, well, you know, when we have these dinners at church, and they come around and pick up your plates and your silverware and all that stuff, and they tell, but they tell you to keep your fork. I know good things are coming. <laughs> Pudding and ice cream are okay, but you have to keep a spoon. But if you keep your fork, you're going to get the good stuff, cake or pie. And I want people to know that with the Bible and with the fork, good things are coming. Hope is more than wishing for something, but is knowing in your heart, in your spirit, that the good stuff is coming. No matter what happens to us, no matter what goes on in life, we can have hope. 
stuff is coming. And when we do, if we go through the problems and the troubles and the storms of life, we know that there will be a better day. We can have hope because Christ is with us. Let us understand something, something about all these things that we're talking about. That children, that the characteristics of children, they are an aspect of children that we must nurture and care for. Unfortunately, we teach children, we teach children to be dishonest in order to gain the things they want or become the people they want and they think they are meant to be. We teach children that by treating them as they are, as they should be treated, we should treat them as they should be treated, as gifts from God. The, the problem is, is that we don't that there are some adults, some parents who don't. Um, as a foster parent, and being in the foster parent system, I know that the, the last numbers I know is that 50, about 15,000 children, that's 15,000 children under the age of 18, are in the foster care system because they have been treated poorly, they have not been cared for, have not been loved. I can think of nothing more egregious, nothing worse than the sin of harming a child. We have much to learn from children by not putting them aside but letting them be among us where we can be reminded of the truth, of the joy, and of the hope that they will bring into this world. Let us learn from these little children. Let us live 